The book of Matthew, specifically chapter 24 37-39, draws a cautionary parallel between the age of Noah and the second coming. This naturally leads one to ask, what was happening during Noah's time? The period known as the days of Noah is characterized not only by the well-known tale of torrential rains and an ark, but also by the emergence of the Nephilim. These beings were born from the union of celestial entities, often referred to as the sons of God, and earthly women. This unprecedented event led to the rise of the Nephilim, who were powerful and significant in shaping a world that teetered on the brink of spiritual and moral decay, a world of mighty men, evil imaginations, and overwhelming wickedness. The Bible highlights the figure of Enoch, the seventh generation from Adam, who walked in righteousness. Enoch, a prophet, is mentioned in the penultimate book of the Bible, the book of Jude. In this book, Jude references a prophecy from Enoch, underscoring the depth of his spiritual insight and significance in the biblical narrative. Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold the Lord cometh with ten thousand thousands of his saints, to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Enoch, the man who walked with God before the flood, Enoch, the man who walked with God and was not found, for God took him, Enoch, the man that never died, Enoch, the man who was the father of Methuselah, the longest living man mentioned in the Bible, Enoch, the man who is listed in the genealogy of Jesus Christ in the Gospel of Luke, Enoch, the man who is recognized in Hebrews 11 verse 5 for his faith as one who pleased God and was taken up so that he would not see death. Enoch, the man who lived 365 years before being taken by God, as mentioned in Genesis 5 verse 23. This man, a solitary figure, saw five thousand years into the future and witnessed the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ with tens of thousands of his saints, as King of kings and Lord of lords. He is depicted as coming to execute judgment. Some groups attribute this prophet as the author of the Book of Enoch. This book is regarded by some as an authoritative and accurate depiction of the world before the flood known as the Antediluvian period. While I personally adhere only to the Bible as my 100% source of truth, there are aspects of the book of Enoch that align with the Holy Bible. The sixth chapter of the book of Genesis offers significant insight into the antediluvian period, the days before the flood. Described in Genesis 6 verse 14, the Nephilim are introduced amidst increasing wickedness on earth before the great flood. The passage narrates how the sons of God found the daughters of men beautiful and married them as they chose. The offspring of these unions were the Nephilim, often characterized as giants or mighty warriors of old. The world before the flood was in a state of chaos and disorder, marked by angels abandoning their rightful abodes. There were notable disturbances occurring on earth and in the spiritual realm during that time. Genesis 6 verses 1-8 came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. The Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be one hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These were the days of Noah. The book of Matthew specifically 24 37-39 touches upon this age of Noah, emphasizing a cautionary parallel between those times and the second coming. Matthew 24 verses 37-39, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, 
until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. This passage of Scripture has sparked numerous interpretations and debates among theologians and Bible scholars. The most widely accepted interpretation of Matthew 24 verses 37-39 among Bible scholars is the suddenness of judgment. This view emphasizes that the return of Christ will be unexpected, surprising many, similar to the flood in Noah's time. I will delve into this interpretation towards the end of this sermon, however, there are many other interpretations and notable parallels with our present day. One such parallel is the spiritual and supernatural aspect of Noah's days, the rise in supernatural activity. This interpretation focuses on the rise of supernatural activity. The narrative in Genesis 6 verse 14 serves as a stark reminder of a world so overwhelmed by wickedness that it warranted divine intervention on an unprecedented scale. The involvement of the sons of God with human women leading to the rise of the Nephilim has been a subject of intense debate and study among theologians and biblical scholars for centuries. The concept that celestial beings or spirit entities could directly interfere in human affairs, resulting in the birth of a hybrid race, is as intriguing as it is alarming. Proponents of this interpretation suggest that the account of the rise of the Nephilim is not merely a historical record but may also have prophetic implications regarding the state of the world leading up to significant divine interventions such as the return of Christ. Just as the world before the flood experienced a surge in supernatural activity and evil, some argue that the end times will witness a similar increase in demonic influences and actions. Other passages in Scripture that support this interpretation also speak of a surge in supernatural activity and evil in the last days. 1 Timothy 4 verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The increasing interest in the Nephilim, evidenced by the rising number of Google searches, reflects a broader societal fascination with the supernatural. In an age where reports of unexplainable otherworldly phenomena are becoming more widespread, people are turning to ancient texts and biblical narratives for answers. The Nephilim, mysterious beings mentioned in the Bible, represent a connection between the earthly and the divine, the physical and the spiritual. This curiosity is further fueled by a global surge in reported supernatural experiences. Individuals from diverse cultures and backgrounds claim encounters with entities that do not conform to our understanding of the natural world. Such reports spark intrigue and a desire to understand the unknown, driving people to research topics like the Nephilim. Additionally, our era is marked by a growing openness towards the supernatural. Popular media, films, books, and television series often delve into themes involving angels, demons, and spiritual realms, influencing public interest. The truth is right now, on this earth and in our nation, we are seeing the spirit world affecting this world like never before. Recently, there have even been reports of large groups of people witnessing extremely large shadowy creatures. This suggests a noticeable surge of what some believe to be demonic power on earth. I remember on one occasion, a minister was preaching on the increase in demonic activity, and he spoke of how after preaching a sermon on this subject, a police officer approached him. The officer said, Pastor, what you are saying is so true. I am a police officer, and the things I see on duty would blow your mind. I am the first to respond to emergencies, and some of the things that I have witnessed and some of the situations I have encountered can only be explained by the fact that a demon spirit is involved. I have seen objects literally move when no one was there to move them. I have seen flies swarm one specific room in people's houses, hundreds of flies. I have seen people do things with their body that defy the very laws of physics. There are a lot of strange things happening in this world. Beyond these, I've received calls to places where the air feels heavy, as if charged with an unseen presence. Once I arrived at a home where the family claimed to hear disturbing whispers at night. The moment I stepped inside, a chill ran down my spine, an inexplicable feeling of being watched. What troubles me most is the impact on children. I've seen young ones speaking in languages they've never learned or showing knowledge of things far beyond their understanding. 
During the days of Noah, spirit beings had influences upon the world at that time, and that gave rise to the Nephilim, and the world of the Nephilim was one of spiritual decay and moral degradation. Their presence may have further accelerated the decline with their actions and the cultures they influenced, steering humanity even further away from God. In our contemporary era, one cannot ignore the various signs and manifestations of increased spiritual warfare, reports of demonic possessions, intense spiritual battles, and the pervasive influence of negative spiritual entities in popular culture seem to echo the pre-flood environment. The most commonly held view of Matthew 24 verses 37-39 focuses on the suddenness of judgment. This interpretation carries a deep sense of urgency and a sobering reminder of the unpredictable nature of divine intervention. It draws parallels between the days of Noah and the eventual return of Jesus, highlighting that despite forewarnings, humanity tends to become complacent and often entangled in daily routines and pleasures. In the days leading up to the flood, Noah stood as a beacon of righteousness, tirelessly warning his contemporaries of the impending catastrophe. However, his warnings fell on deaf ears. Society was deeply entrenched in worldly pursuits, mocking and scoffing at Noah's admonitions and dismissing him as an alarmist or madman. But when the rains began and the waters rose, their laughter turned to cries of despair. By then, it was too late. Proponents of this interpretation note that Jesus, when teaching about the end times, draws from this narrative, suggesting that history tends to repeat itself. As in Noah's days, there will be those who dismiss the signs and choose to remain blind to the impending judgment. The return of Christ, akin to the flood, will be sudden, catching many off guard. This serves as a poignant reminder of the essential nature of spiritual vigilance. In an unexpected moment, history will once again witness the undeniable manifestation of divine judgment. This view posits that when Jesus compared his second coming to the days of Noah, he provided insight into what to expect. Jesus explained that life would continue with its usual routines, eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. While these activities may seem ordinary, their implications in our spiritual walk are profound. This interpretation suggests that Jesus was emphasizing the concept of business as usual. In Noah's time, people carried on with daily routines focused on immediate needs and desires, oblivious to the impending judgment. Similarly, Jesus warns that many will be engaged in ordinary life pursuits, unaware of the spiritual reality unfolding around them. This parallel also applies to death. There are people living their daily routines today, not knowing that it may be their last day. They are oblivious to the reality that they may soon stand before their Maker. Business goes on as usual for them, just as no one knows when they will leave this world and step into eternity, so too will people be unaware of how close the coming of the Son of Man is. Business will continue as usual. In the days of Noah, humanity made a conscious choice to turn away from God's righteous ways. They indulged in sin, embracing moral relativism and personal gratification. Above all else, the pursuit of pleasure and self-centered desires became their primary focus, leading them further from the truth and goodness of God. This departure from God's commands caused a spiritual and moral decay to permeate society, with devastating consequences for the generations that followed. What is deeply unsettling is that amidst the moral decay, life appeared to continue as usual. People went about their daily routines, seemingly oblivious to the spiritual darkness that surrounded them. The world functioned, marriages took place, and meals were shared, as if nothing was amiss. It is a poignant reminder that the appearance of normalcy can be deceiving, lulling us into complacency and blinding us to the reality of our spiritual condition. Our world is full of people like this, people who are spiritually blind, unaware of their desperate need for a savior, yet they are enjoying life, going on hikes, enjoying the scenery, going on dates with their love of interest, going to the cinema to watch a film they have waited months to be released, buying new cars, celebrating occasions, not knowing that judgment is coming, not knowing how fast approaching judgment is coming, yet they are living normal lives, spiritually blind yet living their normal lives. 
The sobering truth is that many were spiritually blind during Noah's time. They were unable or unwilling to see the true state of their souls and the impending judgment that awaited them. They were captivated by the allure of sin and the pursuit of personal desires, forsaking divine truth. This spiritual blindness prevented them from recognizing the desperate need for repentance and reconciliation with God. In the days of Noah, humanity made a conscious choice to turn away from God's righteous ways. They indulged in sin, embracing moral relativism and personal gratification, above all else, the pursuit of pleasure and self-centered desires became their primary focus, leading them further from the truth and goodness of God. This departure from God's commands caused a spiritual and moral decay to permeate society, with devastating consequences for the generations that followed. This interpretation believes that when Jesus spoke of life continuing as it was in the days of Noah, he was emphasizing the concept of business as usual. For in an unexpected moment, history will once again witness the undeniable manifestation of divine judgment.